Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and today's video is going to be about 20 reasons why the air conditioner may not be keeping up, or not cooling enough. So for example, if somebody sets their thermostat to 72, and it runs all day long, but it only manages to get to about 75, and just struggles like that all the time. And before we get into this, there's two things that I want to point out, and the first one is, a properly sized and a properly operating air conditioner usually should not be running all day long, non-stop, unless it's really, really hot outside. The unit should occasionally turn off throughout the day. And another thing that homeowners often have a misconception with is that turning down the temperature on your thermostat will actually make the air colder coming out of your vents. That is not true. Turning down the temperature on your thermostat will only tell the air conditioner to run longer until it reaches that lower set point. That's all that does. So setting down the thermostat to 60 degrees is not gonna help anything. Just wanted to mention that before we started. But anyway, we have a long list, so let's just dive right in. The first reason why the air conditioner might not be keeping up is simply because the unit outside is not running at all. So I've been to quite a few houses where the homeowner thought that the air conditioner has been running this whole time, it's just not cooling enough, whereas the unit outside was not running at all. It was just the fan circulating the air inside the house, the fan that's in the air handler or the furnace. So if an air conditioner is not cooling enough or not cooling properly, a good place to start is to see if the outdoor unit is running at all. And if it's not turning on, I have a good video for that. If you're interested, it's called AC Not Turning On, How to Fix It. I go step by step of all the things that a homeowner can try to do themselves to get the unit going. Which also brings us to reason number two why the AC is not cooling enough. And that may be because of a dead capacitor. A lot of these air conditioners have a dual capacitor, which means that it's basically two capacitors in one. So the capacitor is almost like a battery for the fan and the compressor. So what sometimes happens is the compressor side of that capacitor dies but the fan is still alive. So what that would look like is, the unit outside looks like it's running, the fan is running, but the compressor, the one that's actually pumping the refrigerant, that's not running. In that case, that's not really doing any good, no cooling at all. It's almost like just having the fan inside running on its own. A bad capacitor is actually one of the most common AC problems out there, and I even have a little playlist for capacitors only. How to replace a capacitor, what the symptoms would look like, hard start kits, start capacitors, all of that is in there. So if you suspect that you have a bad capacitor, perhaps you could look at some of those videos. And reason number three is a locked up compressor. So it would look similar to that previous scenario that I described. The fan might be running, but the compressor is not turning on, and the capacitor is good in that case, but the compressor is locking up, which means that it's trying to start, but it's failing to start. This happens more commonly on older units. And many times you can actually get it going by putting in a hard start kit. Now, if your compressor is already locking up, chances are that the hard start kit will only prolong the life of the unit by a couple of years, but the problem will probably return down the road. Although I have seen it prolong the life of it by five or more years. And yes, I also do have videos on how to put in a hard start kit if you wanna try putting one of those in. Reason number four is a bad condenser fan motor. Sometimes this is obvious. You come outside and the fan is simply not spinning, but you can hear the compressor running. And if you try to spin it with a stick or something, you can tell that it's just really seized up. You could try oiling it to get it going. That doesn't often work. I mean, if it's already locked up to the point where you're barely able to spin it, oiling it is probably not gonna help. So sometimes it's obvious where the motor is just completely seized up. Sometimes it'll even be steaming, or if you put your hand on it, it'll be super, super hot, almost to the point of burning your hand. But other times it's not as obvious. Sometimes I come out to a unit and everything is working fine. The air conditioner is cooling the house good. Everything is good. But the customer says, hey, my temperature just never goes down to the set point. Some of those problems are really hard to track down because they're intermittent. So what will happen is the motor is failing but it takes time for it to overheat. So it can run for like a whole hour before the motor starts to overheat and you could actually see it slowly slow down and come to a stop. So those can be pretty tricky to catch in the act of doing that because after a while that fan motor will cool off and that fan motor will usually come right back on. And number five is a dirty furnace filter or the filter in your air handler. Now this problem is actually one of the most common ones as well. Actually, I was just at my dad-in-law's house 
and he tells me, hey, my air conditioner doesn't seem to be keeping up. And right after he says that, he himself realizes, oh, hey, I don't think I changed my filter in a while. So he goes down there to check it and he brings back the purple frame, which is one of those premium filters, filters that's already all sucked in and super dirty. Put a new filter in there and within an hour, he, we could already feel a big difference in the house. So that's an easy thing to check. If you haven't replaced your furnace filter in a while, maybe try doing that, especially if you're using the really premium expensive filters, the ones where the accordions are closely knit together, they have higher MPR ratings or MERV ratings. Those filters are great. They filter stuff out very good, but you can't forget to replace them because once they start getting dirty, they become a lot more restrictive than those lower grade, cheaper filters. I actually have a whole video on that where I test different filters and see how they affect the airflow. And I also have a video on commonly asked furnace questions where I answer pretty much all the furnace filter questions that a person may have. So if you're interested, check out that video. Reason number six is a plugged evaporator coil. A lot of times when I see this happen, sometimes the customer had forgotten to put a filter in altogether, or maybe there was a gap somewhere there and a lot of air can get through. But even with a filter there, with time, the A coil that sits on top of your furnace, which is part of the air conditioner, that does get plugged up and gets dirty. Once that gets plugged up enough, it starts to restrict the airflow, which of course decreases how well it cools your house. And if it gets plugged up enough, that coil might start to freeze over. So if you see any ice buildup, that may be part of the problem. Unfortunately, cleaning an A coil usually is a pain in the butt. They're typically pretty hard to get to. You have to take apart the plenum, the sheet metal that's around that coil. Sometimes you have to cut it open. Sometimes, it's pretty rare, but sometimes it'll have a door or it'll be positioned really nicely where you can get in there and just clean it with a vacuum and a brush, but usually it's not that nice. For most people, the best option is to call a duct cleaning company and just have them clean that A coil for them. And reason number seven is a dirty condenser coil, which is the unit outside. It's sucking air in from the sides and then exhausting it from the top right here. Basically the way it works is all the heat that it collects from inside the house, it's gonna be rejecting it from up on top right here. If the coil is super dirty with grass, dirt, cottonwood seeds and whatever else, then that will of course restrict the airflow and cause the unit not to cool as well. So cleaning that is actually pretty easy. All you need is some hose and water. Most technicians will tell you that you have to spray it from inside out. You have to take the top off or the fan off and spray it inside out. But if that's hard to get off, if there's like 20 screws, I found that usually spraying it from outside in is more than enough. On my unit, I typically just spray it from outside in and that gets the job done. I do have a video of where I clean my unit, so if you wanted to see an example of how that's done, you can check that video out. By the way, I've been referencing a lot of videos, so I'm gonna go ahead and put all the ones that I've referenced in the description. So if you wanna see one of the videos that I've been talking about, most of them hopefully will be in that description. And reason number eight is a dirty or plugged return grill and maybe the return duct. Sometimes I come out to a house and I see the whole return grill just taped off or blocked. Sometimes people have a box in front of it or something else blocking it. Sometimes I see really hairy grills, the return grills, I mean. It's just covered with dust. So that's an easy thing to check for and clean. If it's just the grill, you can take it off. Sometimes it's just caked and just wipe it down and vacuum it. And then as far as you can get, try to vacuum that duct behind it as well. Cause usually the dirtiest part of the return ducts is right by the grills. So if you can clean that area, that should make a big difference by itself. And reason number nine is a bad or malfunctioning thermostat. So sometimes the thermostat could be causing the no cooling issue or not cooling enough. Sometimes it shows you the wrong temperature or it doesn't turn the air conditioner on when it's supposed to. Sometimes changing the batteries, if your thermostat has batteries, is all that's needed. Other times you have to replace the thermostat and if it's not turning the unit on at all, one way you can check if that thermostat is the one that's the problem or not is to simply bypass the thermostat by taking it off the wall and putting a jumper wire between Y and R to see if the air conditioner will turn on. I have a video on how to bypass the thermostat if you wanna check that video out. And reason number 10 is that your programmable thermostat is messing with you. So if you have a programmable thermostat with a program in the background, if you haven't programmed that, or maybe you had a power outage and somehow the program got reset, 
chances are that your program is messing with you. So you adjust the temperature to let's say 72, but then when it comes for the next program cycle, that can jump back up to 76 or whatever the temperature is on the program. So if you have a programmable thermostat, an easy way to get rid of all of that if you don't want to program it is just put the thermostat on hold. And what that means is it will hold that temperature permanently. It will not jump around. Most digital thermostats will have that hold feature. And reason number 11 is that the homeowner simply let the house get too hot before they turned their air conditioner on. I get calls like that sometimes. So if it's 110 degrees outside and the customer waited until it's 90 in the house before they turned the AC on, that air conditioner is not gonna catch up probably the whole entire day and it'll take it the whole night to finally get down to that temperature where they set it to, if they set it to 70. If it's really hot outside, most air conditioners will maintain a set temperature, but they will struggle to decrease it. So if it's 120 degrees outside and your thermostat is set to 75, it'll keep it there. But if you set it to 70, it'll most likely struggle a lot to get there, even if your air conditioner is running properly and there's no problems with it. So high outdoor temperatures do affect it. Reason number 12 is that the unit is low on refrigerant. That's a pretty bad problem to have. This is not something that a homeowner can fix themselves. So if the unit is low on refrigerant, this is not something that should be refilled every couple of years. The air conditioner is a permanently sealed system, which means whatever refrigerant or Freon is in there, that should stay in there for the life of the unit whether it be 20 or 30 years or however long it lives. You should not have to add refrigerant to it every couple of years. If you're adding something to it, that means your unit does have a leak and it's leaking out somewhere. Now there's two things that a homeowner can try to check themselves to see if potentially he has a problem with refrigerant. One is to look at the suction line. That's gonna be the thicker copper line going to a unit. There's usually a thin line and a thicker one. The one that's insulated is gonna be your suction line. Wherever that line is bare, usually on a properly charged air conditioner, while it's running, that suction line is gonna be sweating or condensing. You should see little water droplets on it. If it's frozen or dry, then that could mean that your unit is low on refrigerant. Another easy check is to check the temperatures in your return and supply ducts and see what kind of a temperature difference you have between the two. It should be between 15 and 20 degrees. I have a video of an example of where I do that if you wanna see how that's done. Being low on refrigerant is a bad problem to have, and unfortunately, that's not something most homeowners are able to fix themselves. So you do have to call a technician out to get that refilled and get that leak repaired. And sometimes there's more to it than just low on refrigerant. You could have a plugged metering device or something could be plugging the compressor or maybe a TXV bulb, something's wrong with that. It needs to be adjusted or maybe the bulb got loose. So if you suspect that you have a problem with a low charge, it's probably better to just call a technician and have him check it out for you. And reason number 13 is leaks in the ductwork. So sometimes there'll be a crack in the ductwork, especially where the seams are, or maybe it got disconnected altogether. I see this most often in attics especially with those flexible ductworks. Sometimes they get either ripped or somehow disconnected and it's literally just lopsided. Air is blowing into the attic and you're cooling down your attic, which is not really helping you. But of course, if you have a situation like that where air is escaping, then of course that will not properly cool the house down. So inspecting all your ducts or at least everything that you can see and get to is not a bad idea either, especially the supply, the one that's pumping out the cold air. And reason number 14 is an undersized unit. So these are rated in tonnages and the rule of thumb, even though there is no rule of thumb really, rule of thumb is every 600 square feet, it's somewhere from 400 to 600, but most construction folks, they go by 600. Every 600 square feet is one ton of cooling. So to put that in perspective, let's say, a 1,800 square foot house should have about a three ton unit, two and a half, three ton unit. And I was just at a friend's house. He bought a brand new house and he had, I think it was 3,800 square feet. And that house had a one and a half ton unit, which is severely undersized. So he told me that, you know, whenever, whenever it's 90 or more outside, his air conditioner can only get down to 76 and no further and that's because his unit is simply undersized. So many times when I come out to a customer's home, one of the first questions I ask is, has it always been cooling like this from day one? Or is this a recent development? 
if they tell me that it's been like this since forever ago, that's one of the first things I check. I check the tonnage of the unit and then I ask him how much square feet is the house. Really the way it should be done is whenever the unit is put in, the technician doing the install should do a manual J calculation to see, to calculate and see what tonnage of a unit you need. But unfortunately, there's many technicians out there that will not do any calculations or checks before putting a new unit in. Now, if your unit is undersized for your house, unfortunately, there's really nothing that can be done for that besides just replacing the whole thing. And number 15 is that the air to air exchanger, if somebody has it, is running all the time. Air to air exchangers should be off during the summer. And I just recently made a video on that where I went to a house and they had that problem. The air to air exchanger was running all the time and that was battling the air conditioner. If you wanna hear more about what that was and what I did to fix it, go ahead and check that video out. Whew, I'm running out of breath. There's too much things on the list. Uh, most of these things I did come across myself and just on the calls I went to, but some of them I did get from my comment section. Some of the subscribers I have, they share their stories with me as well. So if you hear something familiar, maybe I got it from you. But yeah, most of these I have seen myself as well. So moving on, number 16, and that is some windows are open inside the house. Now for most people, this is common sense, but there are people out there that think that it's okay to have windows open while your air conditioner is running. That kind of defeats the purpose because hot air travels from hot to cold. So the hot air outside, it's almost like it's getting sucked into the house. So if your house is cooler than it is outside, hot air is just rushing in. Even if you have the doors closed to that bedroom, still all the cracks around the door and beneath it, that air is just gonna get sucked out. So long story short, when the AC is running, all the windows in the house should be closed. And reason number 17 is caused by a hack job. Fortunately, this is pretty rare. I got this from one of my viewers, my subscriber, he commented this in one of my videos. But he was saying that an installer, when he replaced his coil on top of the furnace, he put a smaller sized coil in there and he didn't put any pieces of sheet metal or anything to block off the spaces or the gaps that were caused by that new coil being smaller. So basically whenever the air conditioner turned on, a lot of that air, it didn't go through the coil, but around it, effectively not cooling off the air. So for a long time he struggled with that, then he opened it up just to find that. So if you have a new install and your air conditioner is not keeping up, potentially, but hopefully not, that could be your problem. Number 18, broken dampers, bad damper motors, or the whole zone control is malfunctioning. If you have a zone system, that means that you're gonna have multiple thermostats. That's an easy way to tell if you have a zone system or not. And those zones are controlled by motorized dampers that open and close on their own. Sometimes those dampers can break or the motors can break and that will fail to open. Usually they're meant to fail in the open position, but sometimes they get stuck halfway. And I've also seen dampers just recently, I came out to a house where supposedly the zone system or the dampers were completely ripped out, but in effect, all they did was pull off the zone motors, the damper motors, but the actual damper was blocking off a whole trunk. So half of the house was not cooling off. So if there's dampers or if there's a zone system, those dampers are just another thing to look for. They could be causing the problem as well. And number 19 is a poorly ventilated attic. They should have at least some ventilation in the attic. If there's barely any ventilation, even if your house is well insulated, if the attic is well insulated, if it's scorching hot in your attic, and just recently I was up in my attic, man, it was hot. And one of my least favorite places to work on in people's houses is the attic unit. If they have the furnace or air handler in the attic, doing the Spider-Man walk on all the insulation, that's usually not very fun. But anyway, the attic is super hot and it should have ventilation. Sometimes that's missing or somehow got plugged and that attic gets way hotter than it should be. And at that point, it starts affecting the house as well. Some of that heat gets passed down into the walls and stuff. So your air conditioner has to work extra hard to try to keep up. And number 20 is similar to 19, and that is a poorly insulated house. In most cases, this is more of a problem in older homes. So they have windows that leak by a lot of airs, the doors, they have cracks. There's cracks all over the house, just air is rushing in from all over. And like I mentioned previously, hot air, it travels hot to cold. So if it's really hot outside and it's cool inside the house, if there's gaps everywhere, that hot air is just gonna be rushing in. So something you can do about that is 
Either put in some window seal, add some silicone, put in door seals. If there's gaps in your doors, you can see a lot of light shining through them. Maybe put some door seals on that. Silicone stuff, whatever you can. Silicone windows, if there's cracks. Inside of the house, you can maybe take the trim around the windows off and blow some foam in there. I've seen a lot of houses where the insulation is really bad around the windows. And one more thing you can do is a home energy assessment or a home energy audit. A lot of power companies, well, maybe not a lot of them, but some of them will actually offer this service for free where they come out to your house and they measure temperatures of all the walls and they just do an inspection room by room all over your house to see where there's energy that's escaping. If you have any hot spots in the house, maybe there's a duct that got disconnected inside the walls somewhere or wherever your windows are really poorly insulated or portions of your walls, they can tell all of that by doing that inspection and they'll give you a report telling you what you can do to increase the insulation around your house and to prevent you know, most of the cool air from escaping your home. So that's also an option. If you suspect that your house is really poorly insulated and you're having issues with that, maybe you can get a home energy assessment. Whew, all right, finally done with that whole list. And even though it seemed like a giant list, I am confident that I did not cover everything that can cause an air conditioner not to cool properly. So if you know anything that I missed, please let us know in the comments below. Or if you have any stories of your own of why your air conditioner was not keeping up, maybe it was something that I listed or maybe something else, also please share with us in the comments below. And if you're a technician watching this and you have any corrections or confirmations to what I said in this video, we would also love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comments section below, allow me to teach you the art of annoying somebody well. So all you gotta do is come up behind them, tap them on the shoulder while you're standing on the opposite side. So you tap them, they turn around, then they look at you and you're like, gotcha. But hey, in all seriousness, do you know anything about the dog bone? And they're gonna be like, what? What's a dog bone? You're like, really? I didn't know anything either until just a couple days ago. Mine swole up, it's right here. And they're gonna look at you like, what? There, there's nothing there. And you're like, well, look closer. And when they get a little bit closer, you turn around and you go, woof. And they get all startled and stuff and they probably wanna hit you at this point. But you're like, ah, oh, wait, wait, sorry, 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 man. I actually spit on your shirt. And you just start rubbing his shirt a little bit. And when he looks down, you just flick him on the nose. And that's just, that's just the finishing touch. Then he's really mad. So now you know how to annoy people. Try it out and let me know how it goes.